Hello friends and welcome to another support spotlight. Today we're going to talk about Dazzle hard support. I have been asked a lot about Dazzle. I don't think he's broken or anything. Uh, he's not, I don't think he's seeing that much pro play, but he's perfectly viable in pubs. He, he gets a lot of changes to his ultimate, some of his abilities. And so um, with this most recent patch, I think he has become more viable than what he was before. I'd even call him pretty decent to good. Um, especially in pubs, so let's talk about how to play him because I get it, uh, get that question a lot. So, Poison Touch, level 1. You really don't want the other abilities level 1. They're just not great. Shallow Grave especially, you really never want to start. Uh, even if your teammate is, like, dying in front of me, I think I would just watch them die, even if it's first blood. This is just useless in the laning stage, and it's, it's not going to feel good to have. Um, I don't know, maybe if it's first blood and like if I save someone we can get first blood, I would do it. But odds are I would have probably taken Poison Touch first when I saw a fight broke out and then used it right away so I can't take Shallow Grave. Like that's, you don't want Shallow Grave. Shadow Wave, not as bad, but also not that great. The reason you want Poison Touch first is because it is either an incredible spell or hot shit. It sucks if you just cast this ability. It does barely any more damage than one auto attack. If you cast this ability and you don't do anything else, one auto attack's worth of damage for 110 mana and a 27 second cooldown, okay? It's awful. What's great about this ability, though, is that it has limitless potential because every time Dazzle attacks, he refreshes the, the damage and the duration and the... The slow increases a little bit each time. Now, the slow increasing is great. Usually, you won't get to the point where it's super busted. Um, but the fact that this ability can keep going means that if you continue to chase someone and continue to auto attack, you are getting insane value from this ability. So, in the laning stage, you want to be careful how you use this. Don't just toss it out as they're about to go behind a tree and you can't follow up because you'd go out of position, you can't see them, you can't refresh it. Awful. For this skill to be good, you want to be able to refresh it at least twice. Well, it depends when you auto attack. Right now, the duration's four seconds, right? You want to get to at least eight-ish seconds, which is like one to two auto attacks, you know, spread out a little bit. Um, and then it starts becoming good, per se. Any more than that becomes incredible. So you really want them to be a bit further up, uh, lots of clear vision, maybe they're in the laning stage, you can chase through and fight. Now, if they turn and fight you, just keep fighting them. Just keep getting this slow to extend, keep getting the extra damage to extend, because it's kind of like you're getting two auto attacks at once, the longer this is going, that the poison touch is doing damage and then your actual auto attacks. So if they stand and fight, go ahead and take that fight. Keep trying to refresh this, but don't go too far out because Dazzle is, you know, a little, a little weak. Uh, he is fragile if he goes out of spot. But that's pretty much why Poison Touch you want level one. It is your best harassing ability. It won't shove the lane too much. Um, your teammates can no longer refresh it. It can be absolutely amazing or not great at all. So that's why Dazzle's laning stage is a little iffy if he can't get good Poison Touches. From there, level two, it's one of these two abilities. Ideally, it's Shadow Wave because this will be like a little heal bomb if they're in the creeps and you're going for an aggressive potential. You can heal the creep wave and you'll do a ton of damage to any enemy surrounded by all the creeps. Plus, you'll probably kill off the enemy creeps, which can be bad because it shoves the lane out. But if you're going for a kill, this is quite good for you because you're probably killing some creeps. It makes it easier to fight, you know? Um, your, your team will have more creeps against theirs. And so if you take like a direct fight, uh, you come out ahead. It's a little uh, switch because you get healed, they take damage, so it can catch people off guard. It's the ideal level 2 spell. However, you should save your skill point in case you need Grave because you do want to save your lane partner and then, um, like, tangle them up, something like that. Uh, salves don't really work nowadays, but uh, Grave can be good. It's a little situational, so I really recommend saving the skill point until you need one of these two abilities. Shallow Grave is the much more defensive, very reserved play, um, and if you're like in an average lane to like potential aggression, you typically want Shadow Wave instead. Now from here, you're gonna add Max Poison Touch. This is the new hot tech for Dazzle. So level four, you're gonna take Shallow Grave. You're gonna have like one point in each of these. Um, and the reason you're maxing Poison Touch to uh, skip ahead a little bit 
is that this is the new build, this shard. So before Dazzle was just like a save hero, right? Tons of saves, tons of heals. And then with the ult, well, let's not get too far into it. That's old Dazzle. The current meta is a lot of active gameplay and Dazzle is good in the fact that he can heal his team, he can save them. That keeps everyone healthy so that we can keep fighting and playing, but he has no crowd control. He has a slow, but like I said, it potentially really sucks. And if you're playing far back to use like Shadow Wave and Shallow Grave, then you're not gonna get the slow uh, refresh, so it sucks. Um, but now that you can buy a shard, now you have crowd control. And it's been buffed up to where it's a decent two second stun on multiple targets, right? So illusions, kill them all. Summons, hex them all. Uh, creep wave, get them. Multiple heroes, hex them all. So that part's really good. When you level this up, it goes down to a 15 second cooldown for two second hex. And then you can even get the cooldown lower thanks to, uh, uh, which one is it? Good Juju. So this is good. Now before, why didn't we max Poison Touch? Even though the shard existed, it was a little worse. Why didn't we do that? Because Shallow Grave used to be a 60 second cooldown. And then it got buffed and went down to like, I think 48. And then it got buffed again, and now it's down to 36. This wasn't even the most recent patch. But now that it's a 36 second cooldown, it has a decent single value point combined with the fact that Poison Touch is, uh, actually Poison Touch is the same, but the shard is better. The harass potential from Poison Touch is a little more worthwhile now that salves are bad. And because salves are bad, Shadow Wave is better. So all these little changes has made uh, Dazzle a little better. And that's kind of why you're seeing the skill build now. Instead of before, you might max Shallow Grave or max Shadow Wave first. This is really the most common build. Now, if you're not going to do this, you'll still take your ult when you can. So let's just knock that out. Um, the other builds you could possibly do are to max Shadow Wave first, get a better heal, get a better D push. Um, this is really good if you have to play, uh, like you have no aggressive potential with Poison Touch. Your team's really behind. Uh, you're not gonna get the shard. It's not gonna make a difference. Then there's no reason to max Poison Touch. Shadow Wave will help you push out creeps uh, because the damage like bounces between. So it's enough to like shove out waves and then um, heal your team for fights, try to save them like that. And again, the value point in Shallow Grave is enough. If you have a hero like Huskar, who is absolutely popping off, and your team has enough crowd control, you could get Shallow Grave, because the extra cast range is very helpful, the lower cooldown, and all I need to do is keep saving Huskar, and he will carry me. So I think if you have a hero like that, you could max Shallow Grave. But if you have a hero like that, you might as well just help them get more kills and then get levels that way, and then go back for the other abilities. So in my opinion, maxing Poison Touch into the max uh, Shadow Wave is the most common. And uh, depending how badly you need Shallow Grave, how good of a game it is, you might max that instead of this Shadow Wave. So let's just uh, let's do this for now. Actually, uh, level 10 talent depends uh, what you think is more important. Getting points in both your abilities is very good, but it's spamming all your abilities requires a lot of mana. So the mana regen talent is pretty good if you want to pick it up at 10. But if you have gotten um, a good game so far, you have a good neutral with mana regen, you have like arcane boots, stuff like that, uh, you're not struggling with mana, you can skip the level 10 talent and finish maxing out your abilities first, something like this, and then pick the level 10 and 15 talents later. But like I said, if you need that mana and you just want to like max your abilities later, this is also perfectly fine. Uh, for 15, your support. Get the heal buff. For 20, you know, get the extra heal. And then at 25, um, kind of depends what's happening. I personally think bad juju is probably safer in most cases. But if your team has a lot of like issues being kited, you know, all the way into the 25, level 25 zone, I don't know why that would be an issue. Then you could get poison touch slow. But I don't think you really need it. If you're playing more aggressive, then yeah, you could get like damage, attack speed, Poison Touch DPS. This is like old core Dazzle, which is not really what we're talking about. So I think these are the talents to get, uh, and this is the skill build to do. And like I said, there is some flexibility depending how the game's going. Something I forgot to say about when to use Bad Juju. So it has this heal slash damage per stack. It provides its own stack. So let's say you, you're dealing with an enemy. You Poison Touch them, one stack. You use Bad Juju, that's a second stack. So two times 40, you get 80 damage. Let's so say you Shadow Grave your Huskar, you Shadow Wave him, then you use Bad Juju. That is one, two, three stacks, three times 40, 120 heal. So as for when do I use these abilities, 
try to use the others first and then use bad juju. You'll get the most out of bad juju plus the fact that uh, all your abilities will go off of uh, you know, 1, 1.5, 2 uh, CDR a little sooner um, from the bad juju. And bad juju is like the most useless ability compared to like the others. So just using this to get these others on a lower cooldown is typically good. Uh, the heal and damage is, I mean, it's not bad, but it's uh, compared to the others, the others are more important. Um, this armor reduction increase per stack, that is a passive component of bad juju. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, when do I use it? Whatever. Uh, the armors don't refresh each other. I think that's, if they refresh each other, I think uh, Dazzle goes up in value uh, a lot. Right now, they're all individual, so the first stack can fade while the second stack still exists, and then it fades. Even as you cast new spells, it won't keep, like, building up three, four, five, six, seven. Like, they'll keep fading, so, like, usually the most you can get is, like, three stacks on a target. That's kind of why I think, like, eh, I miss old Dazzle. But if that ever gets buffed, uh, I would expect Dazzle Stonks to go up. For items, um, okay, there's some flex for these starting items. So the most aggressive potential you have is Blightstone. It's really just the Blightstone. The Blightstone is good because you right-click pretty well as Dazzle. Your carry is going to right-click. And then Poison Touch is actually physical damage. So the enemy has low armor and you have good aggressive potential. You can go for a Blightstone. It's fairly greedy, but this gives you the most chances to uh, like really kill someone, get a ton of value out of Poison Touch. If they're high armor, don't bother with this. It's not really worth it. And if your team doesn't have kill potential, don't bother with it. Now, if you're not going for a Blightstone and you can still kind of play aggressive, you're going to be like kind of defensive. Just basic stats is pretty good. Like I said, your right click is pretty solid. So if you want to grab like a bunch of iron branches, this gives you five damage, you know, to make all your auto attacks just build up. Every 10 auto attacks, you get one for free uh, with this build. So this would be fine. If it's a good stick game, grab a stick. Um, if you want to grab like a mango in case you need an emergency shadow uh, grave, sorry, shadow wave or shallow grave, it's, it's I mess these up all the time. Um, one mango can be good, but at the start of the game, you're mainly just like sparingly, sparingly using poison touch. So you don't really need a mango right away. And that's why I would opt for like stats instead. Um, plus, if you're getting the magic stick, this will help you build up charges to then replace that mango, which maybe you'll still buy one if you need to not a good stick game you know something is for a salve it's not as good on your cores but you can use it you know you fight and then you salve yourself that would be fine um extra tangos just to be like more right clicky and uh, trade with people and then just like heal up um yeah any kind of like starting build like that would be would be fine depending on the game early game you're gonna go for your boots your magic wand if you want like raindrops that's fine um there's some other small items you can get but let's get back to those in a second um, so this will be like a very default generic start. This is the main build that's going on right now is to do arcane boots into the shard. If you really need the shard, like your team desperately needs crowd control and you're not having a great game, you can skip arcane boots. Just go brown boots into the shard. You can also totally skip these core items. So I know, kind of funny, right? Dazzle has a flexible item build. I don't know what to say. He has what, like, Dazzle is a healer and a saver, and he already has those. So buy whatever your team needs for a given game, which sometimes you need crowd control. So this is good. The active mana helps you, helps your team have enough mana, and then you provide heals, and then you provide crowd control. So this is very good for an active play style, which is very popular right now. Sometimes it's not what you need. Sometimes you have a crystal maiden on your team. You don't need more mana. And you have tons of stuns uh, from all your cores. So you don't need a shard. But what you really need is a four staff against a slark or a clockwork. Perfectly fine. Grab that four staff. Something in a glimmer. Um, just because glimmer is a great support item, right? Buy a glimmer. Aether Lens is nice because you can stand further back, cast all your spells. Dazzle is a backline support, typically, uh, as the game goes on, especially. In the early game, it's fine. When you have the shard, you can kind of like pop up and hex people. But later on, you definitely want to be a lot more further back. Use the hex more defensively and just be as far back as possible, but still be able to grave and heal people. That's what Aether Lens is useful for. Um, Holy Locket, boost your healing. Uh, so if you're maxing Shadow Wave, Holy Locket can be good. If you're like maxing Grave first, you probably don't need the Holy Locket. Probably buy something to like amp up the guy you're saving that you're not healing, like that Huskar. Get like Drums or Medallion. So I'd say these are the most common items. This like top row plus this medallion. 
and it usually comes after the arcane shard but not always like brown boots into four staff arcane shard fine brown boots force shard fine brown boots glimmer you really need a glimmer because glimmer is going to add another mana cost and if you don't have like any other kind of mana item going to be tough sometimes you got to do that though so you can really go for any of these items uh, so long as you can justify it to me, like point out to your team, like, oh, the, these three really benefit from drums. So that's why I want to get drums. Okay. I'm totally fine with that. You know? So there's a lot of flexibility with dazzle that makes it a little tough, but if you're not sure, this is a very safe build and then go from there. And these are some greedier long-term items, which brings us back to that early game. Like if you want to get a casual wind lace, which will build into drums, perfectly fine. A bassy, which will build into the Vlads great you want to get a sage's mask because it'll build into like a medallion sure um these are all perfectly fine items the last thing i should talk about is axe if axe is in the pool i personally don't really care um i know his ultimate goes through shallow grave however i think dazzle is actually pretty good against axe in the laning stage because it's easy to refresh poison touch a lot when axe is playing really deep Plus, if he's uh, cutting creep waves to get the spins, Shadow Wave does a ton of damage to Axe. So I think you can actually win the laning stage against Axe pretty easily. And then if Axe is having a bad game, doesn't have a bunch of items, has a hard time actually like initiating, surviving, and canceling, or I guess countering your Shallow Grave, uh, not so much like canceling it. Um, so I don't care personally is it annoying yes sometimes i do ban axe because the most annoying thing to me is that everyone just picks axe in response to dazzle and it's boring to keep playing against axe but i personally don't really care um i also think the shallow grave heal amp actually made it a little easier to deal with axe where you shallow grave someone and then you see axe coming in for the ult and then you quickly like Shadow Wave, Bad Juju, maybe Holy Lock them, Mech them if you have that, whatever, and he actually misses his ultimate. Or maybe you even Hex Axe as he comes in for the ultimate, um, and so they get to the Shallow Grave survive a little longer. So I think Dazzle actually has some tools to deal with Axe. Is it still technically a counter? Yes. Um, so if you want to ban it, it's fine, but like I really don't think it's unplayable. However, if you lose to Axe in the laning stage, it will feel really bad, borderline unplayable. So if you just want to like be safe and just ban him out, go for it. But if you want to live on the edge, I guess, I don't know, just leave him in and uh, learn to deal with it, I guess. Learn to beat Axe in the laning stage and then you'll be fine. So that is it. Um, there are no gameplay clips this time because I actually played a Dazzle game and uploaded it and talked my way through it. That is on the channel. You may have already seen it. If not, I'll link it in the description. It'll also pop up here or whatever. Um, same with this guide, which I don't always say, but all the support spotlights are in the description. You can find them there if you're having trouble finding it in the client. Um, there we go, published. So, uh, if you want the guide, if you want to see that gameplay example of how to play Dazzle, I mean, it's not perfect and there are other, you know, other games you'll have to adapt a little bit but that should give you a good idea to get started so that is it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye everyone